Whoops, uh, you're good. Okay, Taliban's impact on women's education. Our argument was how do the acts of terrorist groups like the Taliban affect the women's education in Afghanistan and Pakistan? So some background on the Taliban. According to Amir John, a professor of political studies at Lisbella University, starting in 1979 when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan and started a war, that was the birth, so that marked the birth of the Taliban as the group that we know them as today. However, according to Robert Cruz, a Stanford uh, University history professor, at first they started out as the good guys. They fought crimes, they took out thieves, and they tried to restore order and peace in Afghanistan. However, as time went on, they began to commit more and more violent acts, especially against women, and preventing them from getting an education, and that turned them into the violent uh, extremist group that they are today. According to Azmat Ullah, who is a professor at the government college in Faisalabad, they rule both Afghanistan and Pakistan, so both citizens of both nations are under the strict rules that they have, especially against women. And the Sharia is what they rule these uh, two nations off of, which is their own interpretation of the Islamic religion or the Quran, and they rule it off their own interpretation, not what it actually means, according to the United States Department of State. Going off what he said, according to Hyatt Alvey, who is a professor at a naval war college, women's rights are not directly restricted under the Sharia, rather their interpretation of it. Professor Alvey also said, in the eyes of Allah, nothing should distract men from doing God's work. So they restrict women's rights so nothing distracts the men. The impacts of the Taliban? So Taliban have a big... Um, impact on mental health. According to Gauderson Sullivan, who studies with the World Psychiatric Association, mental health is the well-being of someone. When you have a big force like the Taliban um, around you, it really leaves the citizens questioning, questioning when they go home, is their house still going to be there? Are their family members still going to be alive? And really, if they are too, um, this can cause a lot of stress, uh, depression, anxiety, um, School closures are detrimental to this because the students don't have any more like safe space and nowhere to go. According to Alan John, who studies psychology and came to the conclusion stress comes from an individual trying to cope. Um, basically, this means that they put they try to fix a negative with a negative. So that leads to drug abuse, substance abuse, suicide, things of that. Okay, so the impacts of the Taliban on the economy, according to Malala Sofsan a Pakistani education activist and winner of a Nobel Peace Prize. Children had to pick through garbage to sell in order to support their families during the hard times. And they did this rather than going to school and pursuing their education. Um, this quote to me shows the dire state of Pakistan and Afghanistan's um, economy. Basically, they were in a critical financial crisis. As found by Ula Azmat, who is the head of the International Federation of Red Cross and Crescent Societies in Nepal, the Taliban was depleting the countries of everything they had in order to grow stronger and more powerful. The root of the financial problems started with education, but um, also extends to their attacks on religion and the Pakistan government. So how could women's education be made more important when the government has um, no money for its people to have food or water? So some of the effects on education that the Taliban have. According to Malala Yousafzai and Christina Lamb, the authors of the book I Am Malala, the Taliban looked down on girls going to school so much that whenever they dropped out of school and didn't try to go against the government's rules like Malala did, they were nationally congratulated on the radio and told in front of the whole nation that they were going to heaven because they quit school. According to Asia News Monitor, who is one of the main media outlets in Germany, before the U.S. troops were sent, the schools were only separated, so the women could still obtain an education, but they were separate from the men. However, once the U.S. left in mid-2021, the countries of Afghanistan and Pakistan, after their war on terror was over, now there's no education at all for women, and the Taliban have completely taken them out, according to the Asian News Monitor. Because of this, 90,000 women are without education between Afghanistan and Pakistan, according to Asian News Monitor. So our first solution that we are proposing is a law for everyone that guarantees education for everyone, no matter their gender. 
Um, it would be applicable to everyone ages 5 through 16, and we chose that age range because um, you can, you know, legally drop out of high school when you turn 16. Um, discrimination as a result of the law against women in any way will result in jail time. So some benefits to our solution is that, of course, a good education um, means that you can get, you know, better jobs, specifically the higher paying jobs that would help to repair the economy. And another plus is that with having the jobs, people obviously are not going to be um, subjected to living a life in poverty, and they're not going to um, have to worry about their survival so much and where their next meal is going to come from. Um, education, if we improve education, this will really have... Um well, it will help students have a clearer understanding and become less vulnerable, and mental health will improve, so that will basically benefit society overall. So our limitations, um, funding for our law, like we have talked about, the Taliban is already in an economic crisis, so where are we going to get the funding for the creation of a new law? Um, you know, would they need some kind of financial aid from another country? They had already in the past um, borrowed millions from the U.S., so I feel like that would be kind of embarrassing if we have to go back and ask them, hey, we need more money, we have to create this law to help our economy. Um, the enforcement of it would also need money, not just the creation of the law. So that leads into talking about the enforcement. Um, obviously, there's going to be some people that object to the law. When I'm saying some people, I'm talking about the Taliban, because um, they discriminate against women. So there's different ways to enforce the law, like sending troops or um, you know, just having uh, extra law enforcement, but of course they're all going to require funding and they don't really, those countries don't really have that. Um, Taliban retaliation, according to Bahu Kamaldi, who is a professor of psychology at Oxford University, if the Taliban are in control, they try to make everybody's lives bad, like really bad, um, they target children, while well, students specifically that are less educated because they're more vulnerable in that situation. Um, those with bad mental health will do anything to gain education, and that leads into Taliban ruling. So basically, if Taliban continue to rule over everyone, the mental health doesn't change. Everyone is still in a bad mental health state. The depression and fear are still there. And really, that just allows everyone to still not be able to recognize their abilities because of the Taliban are in So our second solution is to send the troops back and have a plan. According to Amir John, the professor in the Department of Political Studies at Los Bella University, after the attacks of 9-11 from the terrorist group led by Osama bin Laden, the United States sent troops to Afghanistan to start a war on terror and prevent more terrorist attacks from occurring. However, there was a big problem, and that problem, according to Bolin Goke, a professor of international relations at Kiwi University, was that there was no plan for the United States, and the troops were on different pages, and really were not in sync with what they were doing over there. And Bolin Goke says that the United States troops did more harm than good while they were over there, and they might as well not have gone over there at all, because right when they left, the nation fell right back to the Taliban's ruling. So some pros of sending the troops back would be there's no more Taliban and no more restrictions if they have a plan and fully um, restore peace and order in those nations and with this people can live more freely and have better lives especially women getting education and having better quality lives than they live right now which is completely cut off from society and other people. The implications, limitations and cons of this is there could be resistance from the Taliban causing another war, or maybe even other countries joining in and helping out and causing a World War III. If this happens, then it could be like normal, where women are without education. Or it could be a disaster like last time, and we not have a plan, and it just goes all wrong. And the last one is, what do we do when we leave? Who's going to be there to protect women's rights after we leave? Another Taliban, or other terrorist groups could just jump in and take over control again. In conclusion, until the Taliban is gone, nothing can really be done with women's rights and education. All right. All right, Jake. 
give one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of learning about Sydney's findings. Um, our thinking changed as a result of learning about Sydney's, Sydney's findings because her lens was on mental health or on the economy and the Taliban's impact on that. And it really showed that while most people view the Taliban as just a war and destruction group, they destroy a whole lot more things than just lives and buildings and whole areas. They also destroy the economy because the, ta the Taliban rule over Afghanistan and Pakistan and those two countries' economies have absolutely tanked with them in charge of the country. So it shows how much of an impact the Taliban has on all aspects of life, not just wars and destructions and killing people. All right. Lucas, reflecting on your colleague's work, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem that your group identified? Um, Jake had the biggest impact because it goes into the details about how, why they rule, how they rule. Like, he went into details about their interpretation of the Sharia, which is their Islamic law that they rule by. And it just really showed why they do what they do and what their reasoning is for why they do it. All right. Sydney, uh, what is an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude from the team presentation and why? Um, an example of a compelling report from uh, Riley's paper, I would say that we decided to exclude, would be um, the fact that the effects of the Taliban really cause um, a big mental toll on people. They really make them uh, lonely and then because it's like, especially for women, they're isolated from the rest of society, they feel like, because they're not able to go to school and attend places without covering themselves. And so, you know, that results in loneliness, and then loneliness can lead to substance abuse and depression and suicide rates. But we decided to leave that out and focus more on the violence and um, the impacts of the Taliban, um, the impacts on the economy, the government, and. Um, Okay. Uh, Riley, describe an argument from one of your peers' reports that made you think differently about your team's solution or conclusion. Um, an argument from Lucas's paper actually made us think differently because it goes back and talks more of how from a young age the Taliban are, they're taught at a young age to really discriminate women. And I think that really goes into our solutions because we need to take into consideration that uh, women are also vulnerable in this situation. I think that goes back to um, my and Sydney's solution, and we can really implement that. All right. Thank you very much.